Hi there, welcome to your Pick a Card Tarot readings for the month of October and Libra season. If you're watching this at a different time, that is also okay because energy is timeless and the fact that you've connected with this video means you've connected with the energies here. So just keep watching and follow your intuition to pick the right reading for you today. We're going to get into a quick meditation to get centered first, but before we do that, I just want to give a quick thank you to our favorite sponsor and today's sponsor, Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for over two years now to host my website, and I so appreciate them for their continued support on this channel. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can create stunning websites and build a professional online presence. And since I have my website with them, I can personally attest to how easy their editing tools are to use, and there's so many aesthetically pleasing templates to choose from, so that website creation doesn't have to take up too much of your time stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns where you can create stunning emails that are consistent with your website's branding. Improve your marketing skills with Squarespace AI where you can simply input a prompt for marketing copy and receive customized results that fit your brand. Every Squarespace website also comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guides that can help with SEO Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to my link squarespace.com forward slash ADSMR to save 10% off of your first website or domain. Thank you so much, Squarespace, and thank you for listening. Now, let's get into the meditation. I'm just going to use my voice to cue some deep clearing breaths, and Take this time to just relax into your body and connect with yourself in this moment. And close your eyes if you like. When you're ready, take a deep breath in through the nose and sigh out of your mouth. Deep breath in. And let it out. One more time, deep breath in. And let it out. Great space between your eyebrows. Relax your eyes. Relax the corners of your nose. Part your lips. Relax your jaw. Lower your shoulders. And soften all the muscles in your body. Relax into your seat. Arrive here, now, in this moment. Recognize that there is nowhere else you can possibly be than right here. 
right now. Connect with your heart space with every in breath, expand your heart space and breathe out, relax into your heart space. today's readings, I invite you to take the messages that bring back a sense of clarity, direction, understanding, and purpose. Take the messages that offer compassion to yourself and to others. Take the messages that bring back a sense of ownership, responsibility, and truth. Take the messages that are empowering to help you recognize your own power in your situation. And now when you're ready, you can open your eyes to look at the three groups today. For group one, we have Dalmatian Jasper. For group two, we have Snowflake Obsidian. And for group three, I believe this is another kind of Jasper. I forget the name. Now, soften your gaze and take in everything in front of you. Notice which crystal stands out. Notice which deck stands out. And when I call out the groups, notice which number stands out to you. Is it group one, group two, or group three? You don't have to think too hard. These are general readings, so chances are there are going to be messages in all three readings that may resonate with you. So you're welcome to start with one reading 
and then go on to the other after. You don't have to think too hard. You don't have to think too hard. There's no right or wrong answer here. You're most likely going to be able to find messages in all three readings that may be helpful. And usually our intuition is quick. It doesn't require too much thought. It's immediate and felt. Once you've chosen your groove, you can go down to the timestamps below to click on your reading, and I'll see you over there. If you chose group 1, Dalmatian Jasper, then this is your reading. Hi group 1, welcome to your reading. So today we're going to be using the Golden Universal Tarot deck, and we're going to get started with your current energies. I've tried to film your reading a couple of times and just keep getting stuck. So I'm feeling a little bit, I guess I'm feeling some self-doubt right now. I don't know if the naming it will kind of help us subside. We'll see. So I'm just going to shuffle and get some cards for your current energies. Group 1, Dalmatian Jasper. You have the Ace of Wands, the Five of Pentacles, and the Four of Cups. So, with the Ace of Wands, I'm seeing a lot of creative energy that is being awakened. This can be a creative desire that you want to act on. It can be sexual desire. There's a lot of fire that is urging you to, to embody it and take action on it. This is an energy that invites you to feel more alive, more purpose-driven, um, more agency, empowerment. And with the Five of Pentacles, it seems like this energy isn't able to fully be embodied because there is a veil of maybe shame or other insecurities holding it back or muting it. The Five of Pentacles can be felt like unworthiness, scarcity, um, self-doubt, shame, lack. And this is just feeling like you're not good enough. You're not good enough to do what you want to do. You don't deserve to do what you want to do. You're not worthy of the thing yet. You're not worthy of this energy. You're not worthy of acting on this energy. And I'm mostly just feeling this as shame and insecurity. There is a Four of Cups here, which tells me the universe is trying to offer you um, emotional digestion, emotional movement, something to feel and move through so you're not so stuck in the Five of Pentacles 
and you're not really allowing this in. You're looking at the emotions that you've already felt, the situation and stuckness that you're very familiar with. You're not allowing yourself to move past it. The universe is handing you this cup of emotions for you to feel so that you can restore flow and begin moving forward again. And that's just not happening. You're not accepting the cup of feeling. Now, let's get some messages from the Work Your Light deck. You have Anna, Anna, Grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. So this creative energy that you've awakened or are awakening to is the foundation of something much larger that you are meant to create. This is the very beginning and there is a whole journey ahead. Right now you're seeding the light, you're laying the proper foundations, which means you really do have to feel through the shame, the insecurities, the lack, scarcity, and digest that fully. This is not a situation where you can just override this, push it to the side to deal with later. This is the very thing that is holding you back and you cannot create what you're meant to create with this energy um, still a part of your system. This energy needs to be fully digested for the divine plan to unfold, so to speak. So what's in the way, which is the Five of Pentacles energy, is the way. What's in the way is the way. This is what you have to move through in order to act upon this really big thing that you are in the process of creating and bringing into life. You have Council of Light, Divine Orchestration Helpers in the Subtle Realms. Recognize that you're not alone. There are helpers in the subtle realms wanting to assist you, but you have to ask for their assistance first before they can step in. So I advise you to connect with your spirit guides, your ancestors, if that's a part of your practice. If it isn't, this can be as simple as connecting with your friends, your loved ones that have your back, that want to support you, that understand you and where you are going. Ask for help is <laughs> basically what I'm hearing. Ask for help. You also have play, have fun, celebrate, don't be so serious. So I know this is hard, it sucks to be stuck like this, to feel like there is something you must do and not be able to do it. I know it's hard, but you don't have to take this so seriously because that just gets you more stuck. There is space for you to still play and enjoy life as it's unfolding for you. So when there are opportunities to really connect with loved ones, to feel the love that's there, when there's an opportunity to be spontaneous, to play, to adventure, accept the invitation, allow yourself to be moved, allow yourself to feel, allow yourself to connect, as that will help mitigate the stuckness when you're feeling stuck, you don't want to get serious about it. You'll just get more stuck, right? So play. Don't be so serious. Have fun as you figure this out. 
Hmm. Seems like there's also a leap that you have to take. You go first, the universe will catch you. Hmm. And this is making me look at the Four of Cups a little bit differently. It's like the universe is asking you to do something, feel something that maybe your current self is afraid to do or feel. Currently, it's, it's, it feels really big. It's scary. This leap is, feels almost impossible. So, why don't we go into that? Can you tell us more about this leap that the universe is inviting group one to take? You have 14 sacred surrender. So I'm just going to go into the Divine Initiation Guidebook. Let's read a little bit about this card. When faced with lies, uncertainties, we can often feel overwhelmed and helpless. Our minds can race through countless scenarios of what could happen next. Life is not without change and uncertainty. In, or in order to truly master the self, we must be willing to practice the art of sacred surrender. Trusting in the power of the unknown, is to make a conscious choice to be open-minded and open-hearted, to be willing to accept what the future holds with open arms, relinquishing the need to be in control and learning to accept uncertainty can be a difficult choice to make as it can feel like giving up. But surrendering to the cycles of life can be an incredibly powerful and freeing experience. When we are free of the burden of trying to figure out what will happen next, we can fully embrace the present moment, trusting that the universe will take care of us regardless of the outcome. We can connect with the idea that even though the future is uncertain, it is also full of infinite possibilities and potential. Embrace the season of change without resistance and allow nature to take its course. Surrender to a higher power as this divine transformation takes place. Okay, there's also an initiation which you can take a screenshot of and repeat to yourself whenever you'd like. And I'll read to you a little bit of what's here. Take a moment to read through the following and think about the things in your life that are within your control. This practice can help shift you into a more empowered state can also increase your level of self-awareness and enhance your, your problem-solving skills. Okay, so things within your control. The type of content you consume. How you treat yourself and others. What you do with your spare time. How you decide to express yourself. How you choose to respond to others. Who you choose to associate yourself with. How you nurture your mind, body, and soul. Who you allow access to your time and energy. 
how you choose to respond to certain situations. These are all things within your control that you can nurture, that if you do with more intention, or if you improve on consciously, can dramatically change your life and your sense of agency in your life. So again, feel free to take a screenshot. As much as you're surrendering in this phase of your life, you can also very consciously live with more intention, with more kindness to yourself. And here's a little transmission or affirmation. I surrender to divine wisdom. I have unconditional trust in the universe. I am always supported by loving guidance. I am strong and courageous through the process of letting go. All is well and all shall be well. I really feel you, group one. <laughs> this is my group, for sure. I was just crying about this yesterday to my partner, and... Ooh, yeah, sometimes the leap that you have to take is just surrender. It's just this big exhale, and knowing that... There are infinite possibilities, and you don't need to have so much control over your situation that if you ease a little bit of control, then maybe you'd be more open to seeing the possibilities around you and consider a different um, path, a different course of action, and welcome a different outcome. So think about this leap that the universe is encouraging you to take as surrender, releasing control, tending to your garden, tending to what you will always have control of, but then letting go of the rest, if that makes sense. So nurturing yourself, taking care of your well-being, your mental health, being intentional with these little things you do and then releasing control of the things that seem to always get you stuck, you know? Okay, let's get a couple of Moonology cards now. Okay, <laughs> it's time to take action. <laughs> New moon in Aries. Now, that might sound contradictory, but I don't think it needs to be. So I feel like when you surrender, when you kind of open yourself up to doing things differently, or being proven wrong, um, then the natural impulse to take action comes and you find yourself taking action that you've never taken before, doing things that you would not have considered previously. So with this card, I want you to just surrender into spaciousness until the impulse to take action comes. And you'll know it by how different this desire is to the kind of compulsive action taken, taking you've done before. Does that make sense? Like when you're trying to hold on to control and the way things must be, there is a compulsive way in which we take action. And versus when you surrender, when you're really given to spaciousness, then there is um, a desire to take action you've never taken before. So, wait for that, look forward to that, and um, 
put your energy into surrendering first. We have communication is key, new moon in Gemini. So for this I'm hearing, ask for support, communicate where you're at with people who care about you, communicate with your spirit guides if that's in your practice, ask for help, ask for support. Okay, now let's get some tarot cards for your current energy, not for your, for your, <laughs> for your near future energies. Yeah, okay. So you have the lovers and the page of swords. So with lovers, you're moving towards the path of freedom, the path where there are more possibilities, more, uh, a greater sense of liberation, like anything is possible, and you can really do um, whatever your heart desires. That's where you're moving towards. And this requires that the masculine part of you connects with the feminine part of you the feminine part of you connects with the divine. So another way to say this is let your mind surrender to your body or let your thoughts surrender to your sensations. And this is where you'll find connection to the divine. It's through your body, through your sensations. This is where you'll find flow, insight, higher knowing, intuition, inner wisdom. Surrender to your body, to your feelings, your sensations. From there, it seems like you will be brainstorming and considering new ideas, possibilities. There's a lot of thinking here, but thinking about um, new things <laughs> because the page is someone who's just begun this journey of the swords suit so he is he's new to this but he's trusting his brain um, storming process he's enjoying the brainstorming process and really allowing that to build um, naturally so it seems like you're going to be more trusting of your natural impulses moving forward and it will mostly show up in the form of new ideas, new thoughts, new um, possibilities that you might have not thought about or considered before. Oh, and the bottom deck energy earlier was the two of wands. So that confirms what I just said. The Two of Wands is feeling optimism and really seeing all the possibilities in the horizon and asking yourself, hmm, if everything's possible, what do I really want? If I have infinite potential, what do I want right now? What do I want to take energy uh, action on? <laughs> I really like that for you. We love to see this. I'll just end with the Six of Swords. So, the Six of Swords is smooth sailing after some choppy waters. You can see that in the image here. There's some choppy waters here, and the boat is moving away from that and towards calmer shores. And the man sitting in the boat is in retreat. He's been through a lot, but now he's calming down as he moves towards calmer shores. And so this is 
after the mind has gone through a lot of turmoil, a lot of overthinking and confusion, there is a period where the mind calms down and you just, what you feel is just like a sense of relief wash over you. And that energy is coming. That energy is in your, in your future, in your near future. So look forward to that. Look forward to the relief that is going to wash over you. And I'll just leave you with one more oracle card. Have faith in your dreams. Have faith in your dreams. I don't think there's anything else that needs to be said there. Well, thank you so much, Group One, for being here. I really resonate with you and wishing you so much love, support, clarity, relief. And just know I'm going through the same thing as you, and we're in this together. And I know we're going to get through on the other side feeling so much better. So, yeah, thank you so much for listening. And let me know how the reading was for you, if it resonated in the comments below. I'm sending you so much love, and I'll see you in another reading or in another video. If you chose group two, Black Obsidian, and this is your reading. Hi group two, welcome to your reading. So we'll get started with tarot and today we're using the Golden Universal Tarot deck. So let's begin with some cards for the current energies. Group two, what do we need to know <clears throat> about group two? current energies. Okay, you have the Judgment card, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Queen of Pentacles. So your situation involves mostly the material world and how you're relating to the material world. There seems to be a sort of maturation that is happening. And I'm seeing this mainly in the Judgment card and the Knight of Pentacles. It's like you're awakening to deeper values about the material world. Um, deeper intentions and ways you want to honor yourself in the material world. And when I say material, it can mean a, a variety of things, like it can be your health, your body, that's material. It can be your career, your finances, it can be your home and family. It's like you're grounding and realizing just how much these aspects of your life matter to you and how you want to care for them in a more intentional way. So to me, it's kind of like the, um, like going from being like a bachelor and having like one pillow on your bed and just a bed sheet to now having a family and a beautiful home and like proper bedding <laughs> and like and maybe there's like a bed frame as well now whereas previously the the mattress was just on the floor you know <laughs> so that's like an example maybe a slightly exaggerated example it can also be like the difference between 
partying all the time and not really taking care of your body to now wanting to eat healthier and go to bed at a reasonable time and getting regular checkups and going to Pilates in the morning. So that sort of, that's the sort of maturation I'm talking about. You're learning to take care of your material life better. And you're learning to pay attention to the details, to the mundane, and you're becoming more okay with taking your journey one step at a time. There is no longer a need to rush or figure out a shortcut. You're very much okay with the fact that sometimes life is slow, and when you really want to do things right, you have to pay attention to every step along the way and just how long it takes to properly get somewhere with your efforts. So that's the Knight of Pentacles. And the Queen of Pentacles tells me that you're realizing just how resourced you really are now that you're being more intentional you're realizing that you actually have a lot of things under control and there's a lot of enjoyment in taking care of your resources and nurturing yourself in this way. It's a calm, grounded, confident energy that I'm getting from the Queen of Pentacles. So I think you're already kind of like recognizing the fruits of your actions um, and just how beneficial it is to be mature and intentional in this way to care for yourself like this okay now let's get some messages from the work your light deck You have Anna, Grandmother of Jesus, Seeding the Light, Laying Foundations, Divine Plan. Group 1 also got this, which is very interesting. So we could all be collectively in this phase of laying foundations for something big and important. Um, and right now you're at the beginning stages of that. You're laying proper foundations, focusing on every step along the way so that what you are building can sustain the test of time. You're recognizing that what you're building towards is for the long term. It has to be sustainable. You have Imrama. Where are you being called to journey to? So maybe as you're doing this, it can be worthwhile to also ask yourself what that big thing you're working towards looks like. So if it's, you know, you're bettering your health and your financial situation so that you can one day have a family, what does that look like? What, where do you want to be in 5 or 10 or 20 years? Um, it can be good to visualize that, really feel into it so that you are more confident in the direction you're headed in. That can be helpful. Wow. You have the Age of Light and Pillar of Light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. Your vibration is rising. You are the oracle. So I'm taking both of these cards as confirmations. Like I don't really feel like there is a problem here. <laughs> There's nothing we have to solve or get advice on. Spirit's really wanting to confirm that you're headed in the right direction. What you're doing right now 
will reap benefits and just keep up the good work. Your vibration's rising and um, Spirit's very proud of you. Now, let's go into the Divine Initiation Oracle. Get a card from here. What does group two need to hear right now? What does group two need to hear? You have intention and also quantum shift. And I'm feeling more called to read about intention here. So I'm going to go into the guidebook. Your intentions have the power to create a desired outcome through focus and concerted effort. By directing your energy towards achieving a desired outcome or goal, you can determine the experiences, opportunities, and possibilities that show up in your reality. As Isaac Newton's third law states, for every action in nature, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, the intention and energy you put out in the universe will ultimately be what you receive in return. With this card, you are being encouraged to set clear and positive intentions for yourself. Be specific about what you want to create in your life and hold that intention with faith and trust that will become a reality. Remember that your thoughts and beliefs play a critical role when manifesting your desires. So stay focused on what you want rather than what you don't want. With purposeful movement, you will create an existence that is fueled by direction and meaning. This oracle is a reminder to stay present and enjoy the journey. The power of your intention lies not only in the outcome, but the process of bringing it to fruition. Celebrate the small victories along the way and watch how your life transforms. And there's a little bit about initiation, which you can take a screenshot of. It says, be conscious and aware of the energy you bring into each moment. Number two, take time to reflect on your goals and the outcomes you desire. Number three, visualize what your version of success looks like in your life. Number four, Set clear and specific intentions for the experiences you wish to manifest. Five, write them down and affirm them out loud. My apologies for the noise outside if you can hear it. I have tried to film this video like so many times since last week and there's just been so many obstacles, whether that was noise or scheduling, and I've just given up on trying to find a quiet space. I'm just going to keep going, and I hope that's okay with you. Okay, let's guess some cards from the Monology deck. Emotions are running high. That came up, but I think this has more to do with me. So I'm going to put that back in the deck and get a card for you. Ooh, the energy is gaining momentum. Waxing moon. So again, another confirmation that everything you're doing right now is 
great. You're headed in the right direction. The actions you've been putting in, um, it, that the, the energy there is building towards something meaningful. So keep up the good work. Balance, spirituality, and practicality, full moon in Pisces. So, on the one ha hand, it's really good that you are grounded in the 3D and caring for your material world. So you're being very practical right now with your intentions and how you're taking action. At the same time, um, do not abandon your spirituality and you're in the play of energetics, you know, that happen in the background. Do not numb yourself from that. Balance the two. Because I, I take it that you're a very spiritual person and you're currently in this very grounded phase of your life. But that doesn't mean you need to completely throw away the spiritual stuff. You can balance the two. You can be practical and spiritual at the same time. Expect powerful change. New moon eclipse. Wow. I'm really liking this for you. There's just so much confirmation and encouragement here. Okay, now let's go into near future energies. What does group need, group two need to know about the near future? What are they moving towards? You have the Ace of Pentacles with the Ten of Pentacles as bottom deck energy. So you're about to begin a new cycle that will eventually take you to a lot of abundance. This will most likely have to do with your career. So it could be getting a new job. It could be buying a house. That will eventually become the, the house that you raise your family in. This can be getting pregnant, building a family together, um, entering a new relationship, getting married. So there's a new cycle that's coming that's going to usher in a lot of abundance and um, which in this image is told by having the three generations inside a house with two dogs so it's like building legacy having so much abundance that future generations will be able to inherit that from you you'll have something to pass on so that's really beautiful and you also have the two of cups so for some of you this is really going to be um, starting a new relationship because the Two of Cups is about mutual love, mutual interest. It's feeling yourself reflected in another person. This can also be getting a new job and really feeling resonance with your new job. You feel very seen in your job and what you're doing. This can also be just living a life that very much reflects who you are internally, feeling a lot of congruence in your inner and outer reality. And you have karmic justice as well, the justice card. Um, when I say karma, I don't mean bad things. I mean the efforts of your action, the consequences of your action. So what is going to happen to you is going to happen for you because of action you've taken previously and because this reading has been so positive and it's all about 
you know, being intentional with how you take action and laying the proper foundations for something meaningful in the future, I take this to be, you're going to really reap the rewards, um, the fruits of your action, of your labor, manifesting um, the results of your action. So that's in the cards. And I'm just going to leave you with one more Moonology card, one more confirmation or encouragement. You are very close to achieving your goal. Get this moon. Thank you so much for being here, group two. Your reading has been so beautifully positive. It makes me very happy that this is where you are currently. I'm sending you so much love, light, and healing. And I would love to hear how the reading was for you in the comments below. Take care. See you in another reading or in another video. Bye. If you chose group three, this really pretty Jasper that I don't know the name of, then this is your reading. Hi, group three. Welcome to your reading. So <clears throat> we're going to start with tarot and we're using the Golden Universal Tarot today. So let's get a couple of cards for your current energies. Group three. What do we need to know about your current situation? Group You have the Five of Cups, followed by the Knight of Swords, and then the Wheel of Fortune and the King of Cups. These two came out together. So it looks like there is some fixation on the negatives right now in your situation, on loss, um, what could have been, what should have been, there's a lot of that, so this image is symbolized by this man looking at the cups that have spilled and not realizing that there are still a couple of cups upright behind him. By the way, if you hear noise in the background, I really apologize, but I've just tried to film this video so many times since last week, and at this point, I just... I need to just get through with it, <laughs> so if it really bothers you, feel free to um, go do one of my previous tarot reading videos, otherwise I hope um, we'll get through this alright. So back to what I was saying, seems like you were overly focused on the negatives in your situation right now and struggling to see what's actually going right what's actually working out for you and because of this you've really been getting lost in your mind and your thoughts the knight of swords is like spiraling with your thoughts believing your thoughts more than what's really there and the way I'm reading this is like you're overcomplicating your situation by thinking so much while, while you're in this energy of feeling down on yourself. If you 
moved your emotions, I think your situation would appear a lot more manageable. And right now, the difficulty is that you're more identified with what you're feeling than actually just feeling it. And so that fuels the mind and overcomplicates how you perceive your situation. You have the Wheel of Fortune here and the King of Cups, which tells me that this is not going to last forever. You are feeling the ebbs a little more right now, but there will be flow eventually at some point. The wheel is always moving, so fortune is coming, ease is coming. Life is all about ebbs and flows, and if you are feeling the ebbs more strongly right now, then look forward to the flow that is incoming. So surrender to that, surrender to the ebbs and flows of life, the ups and downs, and recognize that you can't have one without the other. And um, it's just a matter of time that you experience the other side because the wheel is always turning. And in that surrender, you can find the wisdom to hold your emotions better. The King of uh, the King of Cups is about containment. The pure masculine way of working with our emotions, which is containment, holding space, presencing, offering awareness to what it is we're feeling, seeing it fully. So that's what the King of Cups is about, and when we're able to do this, we gain emotional and spiritual wisdom. We gain um, a sense of agency and empowerment. I want to say control, but I feel like control has a negative connotation, so it's not controlling your emotions really, it's just it's containing it and holding your emotions. Being able to be with it is what offers um, so much empowerment, agency, and wisdom. So you're being encouraged to be the King of Cups right now. How can you allow what you're feeling to be there? Hold it, be with it, see it, allow it to flow as emotions naturally do, and, and not be swayed in your experiencing of the emotion. Now let's go into some Work Your Light cards. You have Inner Temple, Devotion, Tune into the portal of your heart. So instead of having all of your awareness up here in your headspace where your thoughts are really loud, how can you center your awareness a little bit lower down in your heart space? Or maybe even in your gut, in your belly, can you bring your awareness down into your body where your thoughts are a little more quiet and your sensations are a little bit more loud. Um, experience your emotions through sensations rather than thoughts. There's a simplicity to that that is so helpful when you're needing to move through um, what you might call negativity. It doesn't feel so negative when you're experiencing them as pure sensations. They just are at that point. It's the thoughts that like to, you know, create duality and distinguish good from bad, positive from negative. But when you're in your body and just with your sensations, you're just feeling what you're feeling. It is what it is. 
So bring your awareness down where your thoughts are quieter and your sensations are louder. You have protection. Call back your power. Cut the cords. Soul retrieval. Hmm. So it might be helpful at this time to focus on yourself more if you've been distracting yourself with maybe social media, your phone, or just hanging around people. It might be helpful at this time to give more space to your inner reality and spend more alone time. You can also practice cord cutting rituals if you find those helpful. If you've never tried them, then maybe this is a sign to give them a shot. Now I want to get a card from the Divine Initiation Oracle. You have 16, go with them. This is such a beautiful image. Wow. So pretty. Okay, let's go into the guidebook so we can learn about this card. Remaining present in a world full of noise and distractions can be a challenge for many. When we witness the external world, it is clear to understand why so many souls struggle to find stillness and tune into their own inner guidance system. In a society that seeks to keep us distracted through advertisements, technology, and entertainment. Go within to find inner peace. Going within to find inner peace is a revolutionary act. When you receive this card, you are being called to connect with yourself through the form of meditation. As you read this message, take a moment to pause and breathe deeply. Notice any sensations as you bring your awareness into the body. Relax your shoulders and unclench your jaw. Bring your attention to your heart center and feel its natural rhythm. Allow any thoughts, emotions, or feelings to arise without attachment or judgment. Spend some time in this space for as long as you feel necessary. Meditation does not always need to be practiced in a traditional sense. It can be as simple as walking in nature, performing a creative task, or doing something you love whilst remaining in a present state. As you spend time developing this level of mindfulness, you will not only strengthen your intuition, but also cultivate a deeper level of self-awareness. This card also points to eliminating external distractions at the beginning and end of your day. If you find yourself checking emails or scrolling through social media upon waking up, your brain will become more susceptible to distractions throughout the day. How you start your morning will set the tone, so be sure to create a healthy routine for yourself. So here are some journal prompts you can use. You can take a screenshot if you like for further reflection. So for your morning routine, ask yourself, what morning routine would make me feel more energized and ready for the day? 
What can I do to ensure I am not tempted to check my phone upon waking up? For your nighttime routine, ask yourself, what bedtime routine would help me wind down and relax? How can I create a nighttime routine that sets me up for a successful day? And here are some other questions for self-reflection. How can I become more present in my life? What can I do to help eliminate external distractions? What helpfulness, <laughs> what mindfulness practices have I tried in the past that have been helpful? What role does nature play in making me feel more present and grounded? How can I create a daily routine that supports my physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being? Beautiful. I really like this card. I'm very glad you got this and it kind of helps tie together the protection card and the inner temple card. Spend more time with your inner reality. Connect with your body and your sensations over your mind. And protect your energy by not giving in to distractions like your phone and other forms of entertainment and that sort of thing. Okay, now let's get some future energy cards. What might be possible if you were to follow the advice here? You have the Six of Pentacles, Ten of Swords, and Judgment. So, I want to start with the Ten of Swords. This is surrendering the mind. Surrendering your thoughts and ending a negative thought spiral, ending a negative thought cycle, a thought cycle that has consumed a lot of your energy recently. This is letting it go and realizing that it really does not have much power over you. You don't have to believe in these thoughts. You can start a new thought cycle that is more empowering, more conducive to your situation where you're wanting to go. So this is really letting the thoughts go, no longer believing them, and then finding a lot more um, resourcefulness within, finding that you're actually quite resourced and you have a lot to offer and a lot to give, and maybe feeling the desire to give back to some people in your life. I'm just thinking of some practical examples because we talked about, you know, um, like protecting your energy, not checking your phone in the morning to set up um, a better flow for the rest of the day. And that just gets me thinking about like what would practically be possible if you did that. Um, so like, for example, if you've been really overwhelmed lately and you've been neglecting some of your relationships, this can be you checking in on these people that you love and care about, offering a bit of your presence to them, reconnecting, getting back in touch. This can also be like you all of a sudden have a lot more energy to contribute to certain spaces and connections and you're so you're you know you might have been a little bit absent recently but now you're like oh I have all this energy to give I want to offer my support my care that sort of thing and lastly we have the judgment card 
and this is like waking up to more clarity like maybe you've been kind of dealing with life unconsciously and just going through the motions and this card is like waking up from that from being asleep and all of a sudden feeling a lot more agency a lot more clarity and direction and feeling more empowered to be intentional with your actions um, and wanting to honor deeper values wanting to take care of yourself your well-being and just just kind of live life more intentionally so it's really beautiful now let's close this reading with a couple of oracle cards from the monology deck and one has just come out what do you need to release waning moon That fits very nicely with the Ten of Swords. What sort of thoughts or limiting beliefs do you need to release? It's time to let go of some thoughts that have been overcomplicating your situation and are actually not needed. It's time to simplify and create more spaciousness. So what do you need to release? The end of a tough cycle approaches full moon in Capricorn. So you're nearing the end of this difficult phase and like the Wheel of Fortune said, your fortune is coming, the wheel is turning, you are going to flow yet once again. One more card, please, before we go. Meditate and contemplate. New moon in Pisces. Go within. Connect to your heart space, your inner temple. Connect to your body, your sensations. Eliminate distractions really be with yourself at this time. Learn to be the king of cups and hold your emotions. See your emotions, allow your emotions, feel them. And that is your reading group three. Thank you so much for being here and for sticking this one out despite all the noise. Thank you so, so much for watching and listening. Let me know in the comments below if the reading resonated.